when we're looking at Kobe, let's look, though, at how he formed his mind. Because I think that's something that so many of us can take away. Because we talk about his work ethic. Well, what was his work ethic? What did it look like? Well, let's start to dive into that. The thing that we're going to begin with is he created an alter ego. Now, what is an alter ego? Well, it is a strategy that you can use to balance your identities more easily. So an alter ego is a self-created persona or a desired personality that is created to help psychologically handle the demands of your sport. Now I have this book up here, it's called The Alter Ego Effect. I've just gotten it, I'm just starting it, so I have not gone through it yet. But in the very beginning of it, the author, Todd Herman, talks about how he was actually gonna give this, this talk at a conference or something, and he's going up to the stage, and the athlete, Bo Jackson, who in my opinion is the greatest athlete who ever lived, just an absolute physical specimen, walks up to him and he says, hey, you know, I've heard of you before. Uh, are you going to go talk? He's like, yeah. He's like, what are you talking about? He says, I'm actually discussing the alter ego. And Bo looks at him and says, Bo Jackson never played a down of football. And they had a conversation about this concept of the alter ego. Now, Bo Jackson was built like a truck. Okay, if anybody had had the right to be confident about themselves as, a, as an athlete, it was Bo Jackson, okay? And yet, Bo still had to create this other persona. Now, what did Bo create, though? Well, he got really into, really into the Friday the 13th movies. So when he would take the field, this is who he was. Off the field, <coughs> Bo takes the helmet off. Okay, so this is something that this dichotomy, it can be done. It sounds a little crazy, but a lot of athletes are learning this is a way to tap into the best version of myself. That's what the book is also talking about. The best version of yourself. You all have this idea in your head, like if I could just get to this level, that's what it looks like. But we're at like 70 to 80% of that, and I want to be at 100. Well, how are you going to get there? For real, how are you going to maximize your potential at whatever you do? Well, sometimes you've got to think a little bit crazy and different. So the concept here is who you are off the field does not have to be who you are on the field. You can literally be different people, okay? If you've got shy, nice personality traits, that's who you are, that won't help you as an athlete. It just will not make you play any better on the field. Period, okay, it won't. So if you are that person off the field, now you're gonna have to find a way to bring out the real athletic traits that we talked about at the very, very beginning of this class. So think about it almost like a superhero, okay? You have your Bruce Wayne here, but then in combat, I am Batman, and that's how you think, and you switch between these identities. So what you would do is you choose some characteristics that you think will help you play better, okay? But, you know, being confident, competitive, and alpha. Okay, that's who I want to be, even though that's not who I am off the field. Now, okay, if that's it, I'm going to build a personality around those concepts, and I'm going to start buying into them. Many of them, they start calling themselves by different names as well. But what I want you to think about this light is, Essentially, it's like an actor who's playing a role, okay? The actor, when they show up on set, they switch into character, they become that person, but then when they go home, they are not that character, okay? Unless you are a method actor. They're not that character. So that's how you can think about this concept. Now, with Kobe, where did he come up with this whole Black Mamba IP, okay? Well, with Kobe, he actually was a huge fan of National Geographic, Discovery Channel. He loved watching nature shows. He loved watching animals in their habitats. So there's a couple stories that I heard. The first one was actually how he was watching cheetahs on the Discovery Channel. 
And we know cheetahs are the fastest animals on the planet, run 60 miles an hour. But what they were actually describing was how a cheetah can run so fast and balance themselves is that they actually use their tail to balance. Now, Kobe saw this and heard it, and he calls up Rob Palenka. Who is Rob Palenka? Well, he's now the general manager for the Lakers, but he was the longtime agent of Kobe, and really, they were best friends. They talked every single day. So he calls him up like late, like two in the morning, and he's like, hey, Rob, I'm watching this thing on cheetahs, and what do you think if, when I'm in the air and I'm shooting, I start using one of my legs like a cheetah uses its tail to balance itself. What do you think about that? Now, Rob was probably like, okay, what the hell are you doing calling me at 2 in the morning? And what insane stuff are you talking about right now? But again, visionaries see things differently. They just do, okay? Even if we don't understand how they're connecting these dots. So that's where the Black Mamba actually comes in. So we started seeing and hearing about this snake that is the second deadliest snake in the world behind the King Cobra. Now the second deadliest, that doesn't sound like Kobe, right? You'd think you would choose number one, but there's a couple other characteristics about this snake specifically that he latched onto that he really liked. One was, it's actually the fastest snake in the world. It goes at 12 and a half miles per hour. But the important part about this is, it has 99% accuracy in combat. So the quote that Kobe, Kobe said was, the Mamba can strike with 99% accuracy at maximum speed in rapid succession. That's the kind of basketball precision that I want to have. So the snake, it just can attack, 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 perfect precision, and it can keep going, and it's got this deadly venom, and you're done. And so he used this as his analogy in a way of how he wants to think about himself on the court. 